Hi everyone! Today I'm going to be showing you the most recent book from Sakuems. It's called Dark Fantasy and it was released last year. Now this is the third book from this illustrator. The first one was released in 2017 and it was called Fantasy Characters and then the second one in 2018, Natural Enchantment. I've reviewed both of these books and I'll leave the links in the description so you can check it out. Now I don't know if she's got anything planned for 2020, uh, it seems to follow that yearly pattern that she brings out a new book. Really really hope she does um, because I'm always excited to see new artwork from this illustrator, she's so so incredibly talented. So this book, exactly the same format as her previous books, we have a spiral binding across the top which is perfect for those of us who are, well, left or right handed because the binding being at the top means that we don't have any discomfort from it opening either way. The cover is a matte soft touch card, quite a thick card, and it's all full colour front and back. Now I'll just read the blurb to you so that you can find out a little bit more about what it's all about. It says, welcome to the dark fantasy colouring book. Intricate designs and mesmerising characters with a hint of wicked ethereal feel to them will await you in this new issue. You'll find 20 designs, single page printed on thick paper suitable for most tools. Enjoy diving into a world of wonders and let your imagination complete those artworks. So, a little bit darker, a little bit more gothic maybe than her previous work, which is fantastic for me because you know I love anything like that. So let's get started looking through the book. So our first illustration is straight there. There's no extraneous pages, nothing to bulk the book out. It is all artwork. So always got really, really beautiful costumes with Sakuim's work, um, you know, unless it's something more natural, like the tree woman that you saw on the front of this book. Um, but yeah, as for costume, it's always very, very embellished, um, very intricate kind of metal work and things like that. So it's got that fantasy feel that you would imagine um, like a warrior princess kind of wearing that kind of costume. Uh, as you can see on this second one, it's a bit more of a zoomed in one and she has the pointy ears of an elf. There's also the kind of the costume, the Lord of the Ringsy type costume um, of the elf. So yeah, I definitely think this is an elf. And um, you can see in the background that it's sort of um, a drippy, splodgy style. And that is because I believe all of these begin as watercolour paintings. I could be wrong, she maybe makes all of these for colouring books only, but I believe it started off as watercolour painting. If we have a look at the cover of Fantasy Characters, you can see what I mean by that drippy sort of look, like the watercolour wash in the background, the splattering and those kind of techniques. So that's what you'll find on this on this, um, on this this book and all of her books is that kind of watercolour wash look to the background and also the actual subject as well kind of melts away and that's how, that's her style. So here's the one that I've coloured as you can see. Now before I get into this I want to tell you a little bit about the paper options available for the book. So when you buy this on Etsy you're able to select one of two different options for your cardstock. There is the super smooth cardstock 300 GSM and that is mainly for marker pens. You also can choose the watercolour stock which is the one that I have here. It's a 300 GSM coarse watercolour card. So either paper is really really good quality, super super thick but it makes it difficult to decide which one is better for pencils. Now really it does depend on your style, the way that you lay your pencils down. If you do very, very light layers, you'll probably be okay with that marker stock. But then again, it is very, very smooth. So there is no real tooth for the pigment to grasp onto on that marker paper. On the other side of the spectrum, we have this watercolor paper, which is incredibly rough. Um, and you know, it doesn't play very nicely with colored pencils because, because it's just got too much tooth. So I think, personally, if you are predominantly a coloured pencil user, the best thing that you can do is buy the PDF version of this and print it on your own cardstock. Then you've got all the same beautiful artwork and you'll be able to actually colour it with your um, instrument of choice. Now, saying that, I did want to have a go on this watercolour paper with coloured pencils. I think I used Black Widow. It's been a couple of weeks since I coloured this, so of course my memory's just gone um, but I think I use Black Widow pencils and maybe a few Holbein pencils as well um, and I use some Karin Brushmarker Pros for this um, kind of sunset coloured wash in the background. I also use some KJ Design by Karin Paints for the gold embellishments that you can see here if I just tilt it you can see how shiny it is. Um, 
and yeah I chose Black Widows because they were a harder pencil so I thought maybe it will be easier for me to sort of diminish the tooth in the paper and flatten that tooth and burnish um, with harder pencils. It, it It's turned out really nicely, I love it, but it's just not the, the paper that I would recommend that you use pencils on. Now, again, with the marker paper, it's going to be the exact same thing, but from the different end of the spectrum, you're going to not have any tooth at all, which I've already explained. Um, but yeah, I tried my best anyway. There's just a couple of areas where I guess like if you can see the nose here, let me see if I can zoom in. Um, the the incredibly toothy paper did start to lift and, um, you know, it started to shred a little bit. And I think that's just par for the course with this paper. If you're using pencils, you know, depending again on the way that you lay your pencils down. But yeah, really pleased with how it's turned out and I will definitely be using more wet media for the rest of the images in this book because the Brush Marker Pro areas that I did around the edges of the girl just look wonderful, don't they? Again, it's that watercolour wash um, technique and that's exactly what I did here on the splashes. I didn't use any precision whatsoever. You can see I've just dotted it on and it's a really, really nice effect. So... The next image, again, this was one I was going to do because it has the graveyard in the background and it's suitably spooky. She's got the spiderweb earrings and the crucifix and the cape and the moon in the background and it all looked really creepy and spooky. Um, yeah, so if I do um, the next one in this book, it will be this one, I think. So a lot of Sukuam's illustrations have this very abstracty kind of look to them and you can see this is no exception. So it's very difficult to sort of discern what's what in these kind of images but you can see it looks like she's crying um a river of well I don't know it's up to you it could be blood it could be blue tears it could be just rainbow watercolor doesn't matter but the most interesting thing is that it seems as though the face has been peeled or offset uh pulled apart and then inside there are flowers it's very um Hannibal, <laughs> if you've seen that uh, TV series. Um, beautiful, but odd. Now this one, a little bit of nudity. Um, what have we got in the background here? We've got some drippy looking succulent plants, I believe. And I really, really love the tattooing on here. It's very fine, it's very light um, and very subtle, but I really, really love it. And yeah, the hair, lots and lots of scope, obviously, in this book for practicing your skin tones and your hair colours. I always say that when I'm doing um, reviews of books that have obviously people in. Because, and I know it might sound a little bit repetitive, but it really is um, a great way of practicing, especially if you do buy the PDF version, because you can print it more than once. And you'll be able to practice skin tones on different sizes of faces. So this one is a much smaller face than the previous one. And I suppose with the more room that you have, you're able to further define shadows and highlights and things like that. So, yeah, this is this has got a lot going on, hasn't it? Obviously, it is a mermaidy type illustration. We've got jellyfish, starfish, lots and lots of seaweed surrounding her here and uh, the lovely shell bra. So yeah, really like this one. Very, very intricate and detailed, though it would take a long time, I think, to do this, unless you did that kind of watercolour splash everywhere. So another gorgeous illustration. Oftentimes with Sakuam's art, you will find that the girls are partially covered with these huge um, blooms of flowers. And this is another one of those. So yeah, just gorgeous. There's not really a lot you can say about the illustrations because they speak for themselves. Um, and they're going to be very open to interpretation of how you decide to colour them. So another really spooky, creepy one. We've got the spider queen here, I'm guessing. I'm loving her costume. It looks kind of oldie worldy, almost pirate-ish. And obviously you've got all the spiders and the web in the background. And she's got the web tattoo as well. This is, I don't know whether it's meant to be this way around. This is obviously the moon and it's heavily decorated with a sort of paisley style pattern. And then in the background, again, you've got those very light watercolour wash areas. Here we have another warrior princess and she is wrapped um, or a snake is wrapped around her. She has her sword in the sheath behind her. She's got this kind of cape um, warrior costume going on and yeah. So it's very difficult for me to fully describe these illustrations because it's so 
it's so sort of open to interpretation. So here we've got a couple of butterflies and again with the skin you can see there's watercolour washes on here. Um, pound for every time I've said watercolour washes in this uh, video. And again she's melting away into uh, the bottom of the page. There's a lot of flowers and decoration here around her neck. Very, very interested to see how people interpret this one. So again, with the warrior theme, um, the belt buckles, the kind of, you can imagine the gold embellishments on this. And in the background, it looks like we have planets. Not sure. She looks a little bit space age. So maybe she's a futuristic um, warrior, I don't know. So this is another landscape one. It's a couple of what look like potion bottles and they have little worlds inside. So here we've got um, Fairy World, Fragile, Wind and Water, Fire and Earth. There's a little volcano in the Fire and Earth one. We've got what looks like a desert island in here and then we've got forest, forests and mushrooms in this one. And you can see the little fairies are breaking out of the broken bottle. So loads of hair on this one is the first thing that I see when I look at it. But it also kind of reminds me a little bit of Alice in Wonderland. And I think it's probably because the first thing that caught my eye um, was this caterpillar. And I just instantly thought of Alice in Wonderland. You've got the um, mushrooms at the top as well. There's butterflies and dragonflies and moths and snails. Um, so yeah, lots of different creatures incorporated into this one. So this looks like she is the princess of fire or flame. You can see that her hand um, is holding this huge ball of fire. In fact, it looks almost as if the hand is merged within the fire. Um, so I'm guessing that she can control fire at will. So this is a younger looking lady. Um, she's surrounded by flowers. It's almost as if she's lying down in a meadow. Um, I'm loving the plaits that come down either side of her neck here and uh, just the whole look of this one I really really like it I can imagine it being quite girly and pink and and that kind of thing so going from what I thought was girly and pink we now have something much more horrible this is obviously the Grim Reaper in the background holding his massive scythe and he's got his skeletal hand on her shoulder you can see she's looking quite vulnerable quite scared uh, we've got the roses in the background and again we have that melty looking um, background as well so yeah, this one would be really good in blacks and reds, I think. This is almost like a porcelain doll that has been cracked, broken. Um, I don't know whether it's symbolic of something, but we have what look like lotus flowers all the way around. And um, yeah, I really like this one. It feels like it's got a story to it. And I like the look of the cracked china. Be interesting to see how people interpret that with skin tone. So this is the one from the front of the book. If I just flip back and show you, you can see how it's been coloured. And obviously, again, we've got a mermaid type creature, an underwater creature. Her ears look like um, fins. She's got lots of seaweed and things around her. She's got a beautiful crystal around her neck. Very, very opulent. And yeah, really, really nice mermaid one. And that is the end. So really hope you've enjoyed looking through this. Don't forget there are two different options for your paper. So you'll have to choose that at checkout or you can go ahead and purchase the PDF version, which is slightly cheaper and it's got all of the illustrations that you can print onto your preferred paper. So I'll be leaving the link in the description for uh, the Etsy shop where you can buy the book. I hope you've enjoyed it. Do let me know what you think and I will see you soon on Colour with Claire.